So let's start this video off with a simple tip uh, and I'll we'll get into details about everything I'm learning about the Prius Prime before I get on my two or three thousand mile trip with this vehicle. But here's the uh, here's the remote. Okay, hopefully you're getting that. I'll move it to the side. First thing to use the uh, the air conditioning feature is you got to lock it. I don't know why. Okay, so it's locked, and then just press the air conditioning button right here until you hear it beep. Do you hear it beep? Okay, so that should cut the air conditioning on for 10 minutes. Now, unfortunately, if you open that door, um, yeah, you can hear it running. Hear that? I put it on high. Hopefully you can hear that. All right. All right, so you're going to have to set the air conditioning to what you want it to be when you get out of the vehicle. So like in the morning, if you want to just get this thing uh, cooled off you know you're gonna want to uh, set it uh, what, what I did was I put the fan up really high and then I also uh, uh, turned that air conditioning way down I got it set on like 65 <laughs> or 68 or so because I want it to get really nice and cool it only runs for 10 minutes and uh, and hopefully you know you're only gonna run it five or so so that's it for the air conditioning feature uh, which I think is nice you know if you're out hiking you might sit outside the car the other thing that you might not think about and uh, I haven't figured out how to do this if you ever watch the car care nut uh, he's the one I'm getting a lot of my information about the Prius Prime uh, about and uh, you definitely want to watch his channel um, more so than me he's uh, he's a mechanic that works on these and I'm just trying to, to, to absorb everything that he's telling me um, and one of the things is, you know, you want to charge this thing for the uh, battery, the hybrid, or not the hybrid battery, but the uh, the EV battery. I'll call it the EV battery. Uh, you want to charge that through the uh, scheduler because the scheduler does certain things to prep that battery uh, to, to get it. Uh, and then he said you can tie, somehow you can tie, because let's say the car, it's a really hot day here in Florida, okay? Um you really don't want to be charging that battery, you know, if it's 110 degrees in your garage, you know, because that's not good for, for uh, a lithium battery to be charged. Well, it probably, you know, I'm sure there's safety features in here that it won't even charge. Um, so he said what you can do, because those intakes for the uh, the cooling of the battery and even the, uh, there's another device here uh, underneath the seat. Um, I can't remember what the converter or something like that. Um that's a, there's a vent right in the center of the seat and then there's two vents on the side and if you could cut that air conditioning on you know it'll be pulling that cool air so somehow you can tie that in and have the two working off of the house back, uh, power you know when it's plugged in but I I swear I've read the manual and I haven't figured it out so we'll just keep going from there let's uh, let's get on a little hike and I'll talk about some other things about this and then once I get you know my knowledge 100% I'll take down this video and we'll put up a, a, you know, okay, this is what I know for sure type video. All right, see you in a minute. <laughs> I still haven't taken off on my hike. So let's get into the second thing that you want to know that's really convenient. Uh, uh, so, and we'll talk about other things on the trail. Um, I'm going to lock it. Okay, I've already done this once and I wanted to show this to you. All right, so it's locked. So you're coming up, you know, you're coming up to the car, you got the proximity key in your pocket. So you just want to unlock the driver's side door, grab this handle, there's a sensor. Did you hear it? That just unlocked that door. So I'll show you that that's the only door that's unlocked. Okay, because the, only the driver's side door is unlocked, you can't open the hatch. And I'm like, what the hell, the car's unlocked, man. Why can't I open the damn hatch? I gotta get in here to put my groceries in. What the hell's the problem? Well, and I don't know why, but until you unlock all the doors, so what you got to do is put your hand in the handle just a little longer. Did you hear it? So now this door is unlocked. Okay. And now you can open the hatch. See? So that's a nice convenient feature for, so you don't have to get the keys out and press the button or anything. You just walk up to the car, use the handle right here. And uh, and that'll that'll uh, 
unlock the car for you because you got you know your right hands full of full of groceries you know you're holding them to you and uh, you just want to unlock the car and but you got to hold your hand in there just a little longer all right as we uh as we hike here let's get into a couple other things that you need to know about the aura that I think I know about the Prius Prime you know I've called the dealer I've talked to two different people there I talked to a guy who I think he's a mechanic. See, Toyota has specialized mechanics, and until you get to talk to the right one, you're just not going to know anything. And uh, so, when you do take your car in to the Toyota dealer, make sure that you request a Prius Prime certified Toyota technician to do anything to your car, even change the damn oil. You know, because what they're going to do is they're going to throw it to the lowest paid guy. And he's going to think it's just like any other oil change and, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm just telling you, there's, there's, that is one sophisticated car. I mean, there's a lot to know about this thing. So let's just get into a, a couple of a couple things that uh, you're going to want to know. The first thing was the lane assist. Oh, my God. You know, I was trying it out, and it sits there, and it kind of fights you. And, uh, you know, on the roads around here, when you pass an intersection, the double yellow line breaks off or, and also the white line when you got the road going to the right so it loses track of where you are and the next thing you know you're kind of drifting <laughs> drifting all over the, so what's the point of having it you're like son of a bitch I mean it only kept me on the road for you know a, a quarter of a mile or so you know but uh, you know what they, I got to think but they made it really easy it's just a button on the lower right portion of the steering wheel and you can just cut that feature right off so it wasn't like I had to dig around in one of them damn stupid uh, computer menus, you know, with the touch tone screen and you got to go, okay, I'm going to select this menu and that menu and this menu. And oh, here's here's finally dig six six menus down where I can cut off the dog on, you know, uh, lane assist. No, they made it just one button on the steering wheel, which my hat's off, Toyota. Really, uh, really good idea. And you know where that'll come in handy, I think. Is I'm on the highway I just went to you know one of the burger places and uh, I don't want to name any of them and I uh, got a burger and uh, you know I'm on I'm in a hurry I'm gonna eat it on the road so you could put that on the highway I bet you could put that lane assist on and for the most part it's gonna keep you in your lane while you eat your burger you know now you got you got your hands right there so if you need to grab the wheel you can right away but at least it's not so damn difficult when you're trying to steer with your elbow <laughs> or I've used my knee you know I got my knee on the steering wheel you know so that, that so it will come in handy for that so that's a good feature to have all right uh, in, in in certain situations let's just say uh, the next thing was the automatic lock feature and you know a lot of vehicles don't give you the ability to cut that on and off I tell you what that's the most annoying stupid thing you know especially when it won't unlock you know you like my old car it would lock them damn doors and I would get to to a spot you know where I'm like son of a bitch you know I got something in the trunk I gotta I gotta hop out and grab it and then you gotta open that door and you're like, what the hell I didn't lock the damn doors you know and it did but anyway on the Toyota and I'm still playing with it, but it's down in the menu. Once it is buried in the menus, that's a pain in the butt. And you can you can cut off various scenarios that uh, do that automatic lock. But from what I can tell, as long as you put that car in park, you know you're not going to open that door. Hopefully, unless you're in park. <laughs> so, so once you put it in park, it does unlock the door. So you might want to use those automatic lock features. Uh, you know, my old car, when you put it in park, it didn't unlock the damn door. You know that was the problem all right so that's uh that gets into the automatic lock and there's like four different ways that you can you know have those automatic locks work or not you know if you don't want them i, I probably would just cut them all off uh the next thing is the uh the maintenance of the battery and i haven't got a real good answer on this uh, i'm getting i watched the car care nut that's what i was telling you at the beginning of the video and i uh, what he said made sense and didn't make sense so let's just get into my computer background okay lithium lithium ion batteries uh, they're happy around a 50 percent charge and uh, the new modern laptops they actually you're going to want to install it 
why, why they don't come with the software. I had to go out to the manufacturer's website and download because I got the MSI Creator and they had a, a special software suite that you download. It's called the MSI uh, Creator Software Suite. And uh, in that, it's uh, called Battery Maintenance. And you're going to want to work your way and learn about that. And, uh, and so what it actually does is it maintains that lithium-ion battery on my laptop at 50%. Okay, um, and so uh, that's very nice because I just keep it plugged in 90% of the time. Now I'm getting ready to get on the road, and now I'm going to be charging that thing up to 100% and discharging it up and down, up and down. But I'm never going to charge it up to 100% until I need it for, you know, like right then. Okay, so let's say, you know, I'm in a hotel room, and I know in the morning, you know, I'm going to get on the road. I want that battery at 100%. And that day, you know, I might whip out that laptop three, four, five times and, and completely drain that battery. That's the only time you're going to charge that battery up to 100%. So, same principle on the, uh, the car, okay, the Prius Prime. You know, you're only going to want to charge that battery up to about 50%. Now, have I seen any good way to do that? No, okay, because what the car care nuts telling you is always use it on the schedule so if you're going to go to work at seven in the morning you're going to want to put that on the schedule so got a couple residents coming that's cool making a youtube video here y'all have a good one so you're going to want to charge that battery up to uh, 50 percent well how the hell are you going to do that i mean there's no setting so the only way i know to do that is to manually charge it and then because you're not using the scheduler uh, there's certain preparation that supposedly the car can do, you know, before it charges the battery uh, in, in the schedule mode versus manually that you're going to want. Got a couple people coming that way. And uh, so what I got to do, you know, is I just come out and you, as long as when you open the driver's side door on the, on the panel, it shows you the number of hours uh, until the battery is fully charged. So you figure 5.2, five, 5.5 5 5 hours, somewhere around in there. So take half of that, right? So as long as you hit it around between two and three hours and just unplug it, that's about a 50% charge. That's the only way I know to get a 50% charge on that battery. And you never want to go over that uh, unless, you know, you, you need that full charge. And, you know, if you're, if you're going to be getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning, you can schedule that. And this is not a problem for you. But for me, I never know what my day is going to entail. Some days I'm on the road at 7 o'clock. Some, uh, some days I don't drive the car at all. I got my motorcycle, you know. So it might be two, three days that the car sits. You don't want that battery on a full charge for two or three days, you know. Or you got the weekend and you're out in the wife's car or you go on a trip or whatever. So these are things to think about with that battery. And if I ever come up with a way to, to use the scheduler and get it to 50% charge, I'll let you know because that seems the way you want to do it and then you know you're going to want to use that scheduler as much as possible um, I just don't know how I can do it because my schedule is so erratic um, that, that's the next thing uh, so we'll get into to uh, as I as I so that's the battery maintenance now of course you know you know <laughs> you don't leave the gas down in there and so what you know, I just run the car on hybrid mode. Oh, here's another one that didn't make sense. This is what I was talking about with the car care nut. So you're going to put the car in storage. Uh, you're, you got your, um, your summer home or your winter home here in Florida, and you're going to go back to, to the north. And uh, so you're going to put the car in storage down here. You know, there's a lot of things. You're going to watch want to watch his videos like pumping your tires up to 45 pounds so that you don't get that flat. You know, unless you got a neighbor to come over and start the car and move it around a little bit, drive it around the block, that's the best way to do it, and most people do. But anyway, let's let's just get off of that. So, you know, you you uh, he he said you want to discharge the battery completely, and it I I've, I've read in the manual that you want to keep you know about a uh, uh, a fifty to eighty percent charge. When you put the car into storage so we've got conflicting information here and if i find a toyota certified mechanic although this guy the car care nutty's a toyota certified mechanic i don't know i gotta get a good answer on that i i don't think he could go wrong either way the main thing is don't put a full charge on the battery and stick it in storage you know you know not to do that so if it's 50 percent or it's zero percent 
which, whichever way, you know, when you put that car in storage, it's going to be one or the other. And I don't think you're probably going to go wrong with either, depending on how long you let the car sit. So we'll get into more as I think of it. And of course, you know, run the car in hybrid mode. That's what I do most of the time uh, so that I'm burning up that gas. I mean, but I mean, it takes a long time. I'm at, I'm at 650 miles and I've burnt one quarter of a tank of gas and I'm using hybrid mode. Now, I granted I'm charging the battery. So what I really, I think I'm just gonna have to do is let that battery drain completely, the EV battery and then just run hybrid mode that way so that I'm burning more fuel. Uh, the other thing is you can use, and, and that's, this is another thing that he talked about, is, all right, I, I really have no need for using the, um, uh, the charge mode, okay? They call it charge mode, I call it the charge technique. Um, am I gonna wanna use that from time to time? Yeah, so you, you always wanna run the gas engine, you wanna run the electric, and you're gonna wanna run charge mode at least once a month so that you keep everything in there lubricated and then of course you know always keep uh, you know at least uh, well they, they say I think it's 5.3 gallons in the car at all times okay that's the minimum I was saying 5.6 in a previous video I don't think 0.3 gallons is, is is totally inaccurate so I didn't take down that video but 5.3 gallon, and that would be true of storage too. You would want to, because you don't want those parts coming uncovered where they're going to get the, in the air, get oxidized. And uh, and and you know, um, the other thing with, that the car cared not talked about was the oil changes. Because you are getting such tremendous gas mileage, you know, the rule of thumb is 5,000 miles. <laughs> well, well, at 5,000 miles, I've probably burnt one tank of gas. So you're thinking, well, what's the point? Of changing the uh, the oil well really at that point I would go off of the duration all right because he points out and I you know I didn't really think about this I always thought it was the carbon from the uh, from the pistons that drop down into the oil and eventually the oil filter can't filter that those contaminants out but what uh, the car care nut said and this was new to me um, and boy I've been I've, I've studied cars for many years I even took an engines class he says there's the, the gasoline uh, actually drips down into the oil uh, over time and it contaminates that oil. So you really want to change it every six months, whether you used it or not. You know, isn't that crazy? Um, so that's up to you, you know, 5,000 miles or six months. Uh, can you go over that? Yeah, probably a little bit, but I wouldn't, you know. Changing the oil is the cheapest, easiest thing you can do. And my dealer has given me... Uh, I want to say four free oil changes, and I say free, I mean, I paid for it up, up front with the cost of the car. Um, so just be sure and, and change that oil. And by the way, that's a real special oil. It's, um, I've never heard of it, like a 3W16 or some crazy weight. Uh, not a 5W20, not a 0W20. Uh, those are common, you know, in the modern cars now. But it's, a, it's in the manual. I think it's like a 3W16, but make sure that they're putting that oil in. Uh, the other thing is the gas that you burn. Um, you know, uh, if you look in, like when we bought the Kia Sorento, there are certain gases uh, that it recommended, and I thought it was just bull crap that the, the oil companies were in cahoots <laughs> with the car companies to make you go to Mobile or Shell or some of the big names. But no, no, those are premium fuels that have the uh, uh, good detergents. You know, if you go to these discount uh, stations, yeah, you might save five cents a gallon, but the quality of the gas, uh, especially with this Prius, I mean, it's it's tuned to precision, you know. So I would definitely burn a premium gas in there. And the car care nut, he he says go to the same station. Now I, I've had mechanics swear by Shell gas, that Shell has the best gas. Uh, and then the other thing is the octane. I haven't seen anything that says you need anything besides 87 octane. Um, my motorcycle is a high performance engine and I do put the higher octane. Do I need it? Probably not. You know, if it calls for 87 octane, then that's what you're going to put in the car. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this video. I don't want it to get too long. Y'all have a good day. And uh, as I learn, I'll keep throwing up videos and taking them down. You know, if there's anything wrong in this video, I'll certainly take it down as soon as I find out. Um, I'm going in on, oh, there's two other things real quick. Uh, I'm going to the dealer next uh, Wednesday. He's going to give me a loaner car, which tell, indicates to me that I'm paying a lot of a lot more than, 
than what it's worth, but I've been up on YouTube. There's a film that you can put over top of the paint, and you can do you can do the whole car, you can do just the front bumper, um, but it's 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 it, and it comes in various thicknesses, like a 10 micron or a, um, a 8 micron, you know. And I got to talk to them about that, you know. They 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 don't they hate people like me that educate themselves, and uh, so I'm going to go in and say, look, you know, Kim. But that you know, of course, as you get to the thicker material, it becomes more difficult to put on, and the more um, creases and flaws that they can run into. So, do you want it to fit on there just perfect and look really nice and give you the, you know, a pretty good protection, or do you want the thicker material that may have some flaws and some creases in it? You know, these are things I want to discuss with the guy. But I think it's worth it, and that should uh, take care. And by the way, getting the bug juice off is supposed to make that really easy and then it's supposed to protect against the rocks and the going rate on that they're charging me a thousand which i said to man that's a lot of freaking money for putting a film over the front uh and there's there's different types of it too you know uh, but there's there's one name brand that's pretty uh, pretty standard across i got to make sure they're using that um so that's something you might want to do me driving three thousand miles i'm going to do it because uh, i'm going to be probably taking a lot of rocks in, in some of these northern states uh, the uh, the other thing that I'm going to get done is tinting the windows, and uh, and you say tinting. I, at first, I was just going to use a clear because uh, it's supposed to block the UV rays uh, better than because the cars come with some UV protection, the modern cars now. But I you know I'm hoping this film will give me even better, especially here in Florida, and keep the car a bit cooler. Uh, but then I'm talking to the guy because if you tint it, you know certain states have certain laws. I said, can't we just put a really light tent that that's you know we know is gonna pass everywhere in the united states and uh and then of course you you, you the tenting on the back can be uh darker than the, the tenting on the front and so i'm going to talk to the tenting guy about all of this um you know if, if, if nothing else i'm going to go with the bare minimum and, and this was the thing i kept talking to the guy on the phone i swear people are just they're just oh man you talk to them and you, i said i said how about we just lightly tent the windows well, I don't know, you know, the rating on that is, you know, you, it's just the opposite of what you think. It's 10, 10 is really dark and 50 is really light. I said, well, the, why don't we do a 50? Rather than just put clear on there to block the UV, why don't we just put a 50 on there? I said, is, is the 50 good in all, all 50 states? Well, you know, I mean, we went round and round and round on this. So I'm hoping the tenting guy can give me more information. But if, for sure, I'm going to put at least a light tent on the windows. And that's not that damn expensive. It's probably only a couple hundred bucks. So it's something you, you probably want to do if you live in a hot state like I do here in Florida. All right, that's it. That's a longer video than what I wanted to make. Y'all have a good one. Hey, uh, one last thing. I said, that, that, boy, I, these videos get long even when I try to make a short one. Um, the, uh, the charging mechanism, that uh, cord that you plug into the 120 outlet, um, the uh, car care nut, uh, he pointed out that there's a software limitation on that, that you only get 30,000 uh, charges before you have to replace that cord. Um, so, you know, what was the happy, you know, idiot doing um, was I would come home and I'd plug that thing in just to get maybe an hour or a VV knowing that I got to go back out and uh, uh, you know, go get some groceries or whatever, and then I come home and plug it in again, and you know, put and put another two-hour charge on there, you know, and because uh, I'm figuring, you know, hey, you know, sometimes I just want to burn it. It is nice in electric mode. It's nice and quiet in the car. You know, I do love running on that, and especially if I'm just going around town. It's pretty flat here in Florida. I don't have any big hills. I don't need the gas engine. Um, but uh, you know, what I wasn't thinking about was every time I just charge it for an hour or two or three okay I'm, I'm that little counter in the cord is going down one so that's 30,000 you know 20,999 20,998 so you know yeah you're thinking well 30,000 man how long would it take me to to go through that well if you you're being stupid like me <laughs> and charging it four or five times a day because you're going in and out of the house you know I'm, I'm taking that ticker down constantly so uh you know, what am I going to start doing is uh, I'm basically just uh, going to put a 50% 50 50 charge on there and run it for three or four days, uh, you know, uh, and then, then 
and if I know I'm going on a trip, um, I'll definitely bring it up to a full charge. So really I'm only going to be using that thing three times a week or so, so that should last me a nice long time. But that's just a little quick uh, something you need to know. You know, don't be don't be doing what I was doing. <laughs> don't be stupid like that cybersecurity guy and keep plugging it in four or five times a day because I, you know, I just thought, hey, you know, I'm home for an hour. Let's just charge it up real quick. And I've actually seen videos of other people doing that. And so, you know, obviously I'd, I don't think they're taking into account that they're going to have to buy. And who knows how much that electrical cord costs. It seems like anything to do with this Prius is expensive. I mean, that battery alone, the, the height, the, the, uh, the battery is 10 thousand dollars you know that's half the value <laughs> almost half the value of the car and you know what if it's in perfect shape and there's no rust on it and everything and, and I get a hundred and fifty thousand mile warranty and a hundred thousand miles but you know what if it died at a hundred and fifty thousand I might consider back you know hopefully you know ten years from now or five years from now maybe that price will come down with the Green New Deal you never know uh, or it goes up because Demand and uh, supply and demand, you know, right now there's not enough silver and uh, metals to go around and China does 90% of the uh, uh, refining on those uh, those toxic metals because it is a very uh, pollution intensive operation and so no other country wants all that pollution but China, you know, they don't care about their people. <laughs> you know, what do we care if they're drinking contaminated water, you know, we're making money. All right, peace out guys. Always good to finish up the video with some wildlife. Let's see if we can zoom in on him. Can you see him there? Pretty cool, huh? He's sunning himself. I was going to get him off to the side. Yeah, there he is. Boy, I got him right in the center. Isn't that cool? What they do is these birds, they drop into the water. And, uh, and then they come up here and they just open those wings and, and sun them off. And then they can fly. I guess what you think about it, all that water weight, they can fly a lot better. Uh, so hey, speaking of birds, man, there's a bird uh, illness going around right now, and uh, a lot of birds are dying uh, in like Virginia, and um, and the scientists are looking into it. Just letting you know, you know, an FYI, there's something something out there, and it doesn't sound good. And uh, well, I haven't heard of birds dying here in Florida yet, so let's hope it's not some sort of bird flu and. Uh, but I'll, you know, keep tabs on it. You can watch YouTube videos about it if you want. All right, peace out.